back to the Fourth Way Podcast. We are currently nearing the end of our season on propaganda, and I wanted to have an episode on how to read a lot of books, a lot of resources. And I want to do that because I have a philosophy of interconnectedness. You know, kind of like they're, they're discovering in, uh, in engineering, uh, this thing called, I, I think it's called bioengineering, you know, where they basically look at nature and say, hmm, how can we construct this device or this structure by uh, copying what biology does, what nature does uh, in different creatures and in, um, you know, in the wild? Because nature creates very, very complex but um, structurally sound uh, structures, which are just so much better than what we could conceive of. And so by mimicking nature, we end up discovering that we we can actually do really complex and, and quality engineering. We can solve a lot of problems by copying nature. And that's because our, our world is interconnected. And I think the same thing applies in regard to information. I think there are a lot of times that we can get so focused on specializing in a particular topic when in reality, if we would have a lot of analogies and metaphors and overlapping subjects, we'd, we'd be able to have a whole lot more insight into a specific subject. You know, it seems like if we dump all of our resources into focusing all of our attention on, on one particular area, it seems like we'd be better off, right? But that's not generally, I don't think, how things work. So because of this philosophy of interconnectedness, I think it's really important to read a wide variety of resources. For the season on propaganda, I read a ton, a ton of books, specifically about propaganda and, uh, and, and information and, and lies and truth and all that stuff, sure. But I also read a lot of other books, and I was, I was always finding a connection uh, to, to truth and propaganda throughout those books. Now, if you listened to uh, the Pareidolia episode towards the beginning of the season, I talked about a book called Secret Soldiers, which is about artists and war, or Off Menu, which is about food and our perception of taste and things. Or if you remember our episode on zombies and Grice's cooperative principle. You know, Grice's cooperative principle, I didn't read a book on that. Um, I didn't I didn't say, hey, you know what? I, I think it'd be really useful for propaganda if I, uh, if I learned Grice's cooperative principle. No, it was just some random YouTube video from some guy I subscribed to or something. And that came up and I was like, huh, I wonder what Grice's cooperative principle is. And I clicked on it and watched it. And it's about communication, right? It, it's actually, it's not even about, um, about propaganda or manipulating information. It's just about how communication works. Yet in that... Uh, discovering, oh wow, this has this has a lot of connection to information and manipulation and propaganda, and just from watching some random YouTube video. So I think uh, and this overlap of information is extremely important. But also, I think it's important because when we understand propaganda, we understand that having a specified mind, just focusing. Um, from one group of resources uh, or, or one particular topic is not generally good. It makes you very susceptible to misinformation, uh, to, to have this kind of polarized idea, to kind of focus on and hone in on one thing. Um, so interconnectedness and uh, diversity of information, in my opinion, is extremely important, which is why I think reading a lot, a lot, a lot of books is very important. Not only so you can survey the field much better on any given topic, but also so you can read diversely. Um, anyway, so I am actually recording this in November, mid-November of 2022. And as I, I end this year out, I will end up reading probably somewhere in the realm of like 210 books by the end of 2022. Right now I'm at like 195 or something. And uh, yeah, like like I've said before, if you would have uh, if you would have told me five years ago that I would do that, I'd be like, "There's there's no possible way." You know, if I read five books in a year, I'd be impressed with myself. Read lots of articles and watch YouTube videos and read a handful of books here and there, but uh, to read two hundred plus books in a year is just impossible. 
But honestly, you know, I've I'll, I will have read about 210 books by the end of this year, but I've played a bunch of video games. Um, I've used my time to play Ultimate Frisbee here in a league. I mean, there are lots and lots of things that I did in life. I listened to a bunch of podcasts, uh, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, read a lot of articles, which I don't count towards my books. There's there's a lot of stuff, a lot of free time that I have had um, that I wasn't just reading books. I mean, I could have got, gotten through 300 books this year uh, if, if I would have used every waking moment, every ounce of free time uh, to, to read. So this is a, a very manageable thing. I would say anybody could read through 100 books a year, uh, no problem. And that's what I want to uh, get into today to kind of help you understand how to do this. So first, audiobooks and earbuds. Uh, I didn't think I would like audiobooks. I hated audiobooks. And I still, I don't like them for, uh, for narratives. I mean, I've listened to like Dostoevsky, a couple of his works um, on, on uh, audiobook. And I really don't like them very much because I listen at, at faster speeds. I don't like to listen at slower speeds. So I'm sure that's part of it. But I also, I just, I'm not as interested in audiobooks for, uh, for novels and things. But I did find that listening to informational stuff, I, I can just soak it up. Like, that's, that's great. Audiobooks, no problem. There are exceptions to that. Uh, so some of the more academic works, I would not want to read uh, through audiobook. But the, the, the positive there is that if you're getting an academic book, it's probably not on audiobook. You're not going to be able to find it on Audible or Scribd or anything. So the types of books that you're going to want to read physically... Um, you you can't find on audiobook anyway, but earbuds are going to be vital for you, and and I'll talk to you a little bit about that more in the next section. But having earbuds and then uh, use, using things like okay LibriVox that's free, but you're gonna get audiobooks on uh, that are older, right? They're they're gonna be I think uh, in the public domain, so probably like a hundred plus years old. So if you're doing uh, research from longer ago. There you go. Uh, it's a good resource. The quality of the readers isn't isn't dependable. Like sometimes that they're pretty terrible, but it's free. So if you want to listen to it there, you can do that. Also, Scribd. That's uh, generally my favorite. Um, Scribd is great because it's got a really good free library. Like it's five dollars a month, and the the free library that it has is great. And it's got audio and uh, digital books, so like you can you can read them, uh, or you can listen to uh, various books. It's got a really good selection of books, better than Audible. However, Audible has some advantages. Uh, for Audible, I got the I think it's like twenty four books, like get the year subscription, whatever twenty four books, uh, which comes out to like nine fifty a book or something. And Audible is good because uh, while Scribd's selection is fantastic. Uh, and Audible doesn't have that great of a um, you know membership selection. Like their free books aren't really that good. There are tons of books that you can only get on Audible. If they're newer, a uh, bigger name, sometimes only Audible has them. Uh, but Audible, if you're going to pay for books, uh, Audible's got the best selection. But for the free books and, and cheap, Scribd is the way to go. The other advantage to Audible is that uh, it goes up to 3.5 speed listening. Scribd only goes up to two speed. Now, I'm at the point where there is not a book that I can't listen to two speed. I, I haven't come across a book that I can't listen to at two speed at this point. At first, I was at one and a half, and I'm like, oh, that's so fast. And then you go up to like 1.8 and then two. But um, honestly, Audible, like I'm, I'm at a point where 2.8 is my default speed. I'll listen to pretty much any book unless they have like a, a crazy British or something accent uh, or or the, the material is just super deep. Uh, like there were some some towards the beginning of the season where it was about, uh, you know, cognitive psychology and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I need to slow down a little bit more. But 2.8 is my default speed. There are some books where the author uh, or the reader reads so slowly and or so clearly that uh, 3.5 
I've I've done a, a handful of books and I've done quite a few at three point two, but two point eight is kind of the default. And I would I would definitely recommend. I think pretty much everybody could get to two speed. You just kind of have to make the jump. Like just do it and listen for a while, and you'll get it. And also being okay with uh, with missing out on some things, especially some books. Like there's some books where you're just gonna zone out, uh, and then the author will say something, and your brain will kind of kick in, and you'll be like, oh, that was important, and you just you know, rewind 30 seconds or a minute and, and slow it down if you have to and get that important information. Um, I wouldn't say that, so I didn't skim these books. I didn't just listen to them and only latch on to, to certain amounts of information. Like I got most of the books most of the time, but um, you have to be okay with not hanging on every single word, but just really letting your brain kind of absorb the information and then going back and repeating where necessary. So I would say you should definitely be at two speed, but uh, you could probably go faster too. And my wife and I, we kind of differ here too. I know I might be somewhat unique in this area um, because for me, like I'll, I'll listen to a book uh, for like five minutes while doing something and then uh, pause it and then another five minutes here and there. And she can't do that. Like she needs a chunk of time to do things. So I understand that uh, the speed and some of this chunking stuff might be unique to to me and other people like me, um, but nevertheless, I think everybody can read at uh, more than than one speed. Uh, the other thing I would do is stock up and utilize. Uh, so for Audible, for example, I uh, you know I got my twenty four books and I might have like bought five or six like as I was studying a certain topic, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll get a bunch of ones that I I'm going to read, download them. And then I, I listen to those. And then I go to Scribd. I see if there's anything interesting in Scribd. And then I, I listen to that. And then I'll come back to Audible and I'll utilize the free library, stock up on like 10 or 15 books that look really interesting. I'll go through that. And then by that time, I'm ready to buy some more Audible books, use some more credits. And then I kind of rinse and repeat. You know, get some of the, the pay ones, and then go through the free library, and then circle back around to, uh, to Audible again. So, earbuds and uh, Scribd, Audible, LibriVox. And for the earbuds, let me say, uh, I, have, I have two. Tozo earbuds are phenomenal. Okay, they, they're not audiophile earbuds. They're not going to you know, be like the best absolute listening to music. But I enjoy them. Like, I'm not an audiophile, so I'm fine listening to music. But I, I pretty much don't listen to music. I listen to books. And the thing about Tozo is uh, I would get two different earbuds. I forget what the, the cheapest ones are, like T6s or something, or T10s. And they're, they're waterproof. They're like IPX8, uh, I think. So I wear them in the shower. Um, so if, if it's raining, if you want to wear something in the shower, you have the, the IPX8 earbuds, which is like Tozo 6s, 10s, something. And then I have the NC9 are the other ones that I like, which uh, are, they, uh, what is it called? Sound canceling, which I don't really care about. I don't use. But what I like about them is that uh, I can use those, like if I'm doing the dishes or something, I will put the Tozo, the NC9s in. Usually I only wear one earbud, but with, but with the NC9s or NC2s, whatever they are, I put them both in and they have like sound pass through. So if somebody in my family is talking to me, I can just do the sound pass through and I can just still hear them. And I can just touch the earbuds and pause it, which is nice. Uh, if you have a, a smartwatch, you can usually pause through Bluetooth connection too. But it's nice to just be able to like, as, even if I'm doing dishes with the back of my hand, just touch my earbud and it'll pause so I can talk to somebody and I can talk to them because of the pass through. With the IPX8 ones, uh, it did not, they don't have the pass through. So if I have them both in, like I can't hear anything, uh, which is a, my family doesn't like that when they, they try to get my attention and can't talk to me. So I think together for like both of those, for the, the two sets of earbuds, the Tozo ones, you can get them on Amazon together for like 35 for the NCs and 25 for uh, the, the other ones. So you're talking about 60 bucks. You can get two sets of earbuds, one waterproof, the other one not. Um, and, and it's just fantastic. Okay, so you've got your earbuds, and, uh, and you've, you've got your resources. So what do you do then? 
Well, utilize your free time. And you have a lot of free time. Or it wouldn't otherwise be free time, but it's free time when all you have to do is listen to something while, while doing it. So, for example, showering. With my, uh, with my waterproof earbuds, I can get in the shower, and that's, what, 10, 15 minutes a day? Like, if you include getting dressed, it's like 15 or 20 minutes a day, at least, that you have um, most days when you do the shower. That's a lot of time. If, if a book is, what, let's say the average book is eight hours, I don't know, six to eight hours. In one month, that's basically getting through one book just from your shower time. Then there's the car time, driving. I've had various points in my life where I've got really long commutes. Well, if you're driving and you have an earbud in, um, you know, even if the rest of your family is listening to music or something or falling asleep in the car, you can stick one earbud in, which I guess I don't know if that's legal, but you can have one earbud in uh, and it's great. And I also like it because the earbud takes calls. So you can just tap, like when you get a call, it's hands-free, you just tap the one earbud and uh, and you can talk, and then it goes right back to your book when the call ends. Doing dishes, even if you have a dishwasher, right? If you're doing pots and pans or you're loading the dishwasher, unloading the dishwasher, uh, great time to listen. Mowing, mowing is a great time to, uh, to, to put in the earbuds. I am wearing my earbuds all the time, like almost all day long. And, and I actually had to cut back because they're, you know, sometimes my, my wife would be like, I don't feel like you're really present. I never know if you're just listening to that, that thing or not. So I had to cut back, right? You can do it too much for sure. But um, it, it's certainly a great way to be able to, to read a lot of resources, listen to a lot of resources. So a part of this too is, is also strategizing so that you can read, right? Having those earbuds m- means that you can read in the shower, you can read if you're running in the rain, you can read like... Uh, you you have access to audiobooks all the time. But uh, there are other ways too, like there are plenty of books that I want to physically read uh, and not just audio. So uh, how, do I, how do I do that? Well, I've, I have a purse, a man purse, whatever you want, satchel, whatever it is. I've got lots of different things in there, including like an extra set of earbuds, a charger for my earbuds, all that kind of stuff, uh, a portable charger. But... Um, I also have a book, like whatever book I'm reading at the moment, a physical book, you know, because there are some books that you can't even get digitally. You can only get physically, a a paperback book or whatever. So I've got a book there. If I'm out, if I'm at the doctor's office and waiting, sure, I could listen to a book, but I always prioritize reading a physical book if I can. So if I'm at a doctor's office, if I'm waiting somewhere in the car um, and I can read a physical book, I'm going to read the physical book. But then I also have uh, at least one book on my, uh, either through Kindle or Scribd, that I'm reading on my phone. Because there are lots of times where uh, I either forgot my book or, um, you know, I, like, let's say I'm putting my kids down to bed and we kind of, and I'm in their room and it's dark and they're falling asleep listening to music um, and they just want me to be in there with them. Well, while the music's playing through iTunes, I'm reading a book on my Kindle. Okay, but I couldn't read a physical book in there, and I couldn't listen to music because iTunes is playing for uh, for my kids, and it's dark. But I can read on my phone, and so I always have my phone with me, and so I can read all the time. Right? You can read on the toilet uh, with with your Kindle too. And I think I figured like if if you do an average amount of toilet time, uh, you could basically read a book in a month and a half just from toilet time. So think about with a shower and toilet time, in three months, you're getting through five books just from shower and toilet time. So in a year, that's uh, 20 books, right? 20 books just from shower and toilet time. Crazy. Then a lot of times we'll have uh, chapter books going for our kids like Narnia. I don't count generally like Dr. Seuss books and little, little kid books. I don't count those. Some people like fill up their Goodreads with that and great, but... Um, yeah, but I will count like Narnia, chapter books, Harry Potter, things like that. So uh, we're usually getting a book that way. And then my wife and I, like if we are at night when the kids are in bed, if, uh, if we're laying in bed or if we're doing the dishes together or something, I'm not going to listen to something while she listens to something like we want to do something together. And so a lot of times um, 
like I'll pick a book and then we'll finish it and then she'll pick a book and we'll finish that together and then uh, just keep switching on and off. So we, we've we usually got a, a book going that way. So all together, I've got an, at least one audio book going. I've got at least one Kindle or Scribd uh, like book on my phone going. I've got one book in my purse, my satchel going. I might have one book going with my kids and then I'm, I will have a, uh, a book to read that I'm reading with my wife. Okay, so that's five books going simultaneously. So finally, I, the other thing that I would recommend doing as you're reading through these books is I would, I started by keeping a Google spreadsheet. I just couldn't, I didn't end up keeping up with that. But Goodreads is something I do keep up with. And uh, I like it because what it does is Goodreads will, uh, will, will put down all my books. Like I'll, I'll tell it what I've read. And then I can categorize those. I can, I can put them, you know, in a propaganda folder or whatever. And, and it also syncs with my Kindle highlights, which is nice. And so people can see your highlights and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I try to do a good job of always leaving a review. So I leave not only the star review, but then I also write a review. And sometimes it's really short and simple. But sometimes I, I try to write down details that will be really important because sometimes I want to go back to the books and, uh, and see what some of my major thoughts were. And so uh, documenting that on Goodreads, highlighting things in Kindle, uh, Audible allows you to save clips. The script is a bit clunky in regard to, to saving clips and things, um, but I try to do that as much as possible. If you're reading a physical book, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll take a picture of the page, like I'll underline or highlight and stuff, take a picture of the page and then send that to my email. And then I, I've got like a billion Google folders that I can organize those screenshots into. Um, and so d- documenting as much as possible. Sometimes I'll email drafts, like if I'm listening to something on Audible and I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to forget that. Uh, I'll, I'll write it down or put like the timestamp and say like this book at chapter two or whatever five minutes in and i'll like email things to myself uh, notes to myself and also in my satchel my man purse i have uh like a moleskin or or some kind of notebook and pencils Uh, i have a notebook and pencils or pens in each car so that if if something uh, if i need to write something down i'll make sure that i i have access to it pretty much everywhere i'm at Huh. So I, I think that's basically it. I think that's how I, I read through all the stuff that I do. And I'm not superhuman. Um, I think it's just something that I never realized was possible until I, I started seeing all the places that I could, uh, I could read books. Uh, if I didn't have my earbuds, I would read physical books a year. I don't read all that many. Um, maybe maybe like 15 a year. Maybe 20, depending on, on how long they are. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very manageable with audiobooks and increasing your speed and just recognizing all the places that you have time. Again, this isn't going to be like, you know, we're, you're not doing a deep dive, uh, super in-depth study on any one of these books here. Right, you're you're surveying the field. You're getting a lot of different uh, books by going through so many. Um, and there are some books that you can pause and and really dig through a lot more. But you know there are benefits, right? Pros and cons. If you take deep dives into a handful of books each year, um, you might get a lot of information out um, out of those books, but you're missing uh, a broad perspective. And, and there's a huge, huge blind spot in that. And in my opinion, I've also learned that, okay, if I, if I really, really study a book, uh, you know, a couple books a year, and then, you know, six months later, am I really going to remember all, all of those things? No, not really. The only time that I remember things from doing deep dives is like if I read a book multiple times. So like G.K. Chesterton's Orthodoxy. I can remember a bunch from that book, but that's in large part because I've read it several times and I've like blogged about each chapter and summarized each chapter. So uh, I put a lot of work into that one work. But if you listen at one speed and uh, you you just listen to the book once, 
and go through it and don't really do anything else, in my opinion, th- there's no difference than trying to read that at two or two and a half speed um, and, and maybe missing a few peripheral minor details. What you miss in those, those minor details uh, that maybe you skimmed through, you're going to make up if you're reading lots and lots and lots of resources and you do so in an overlapping fashion, you know, like studying one topic at a time, but you read multiple sources on it. There's going to be a lot of overlap, and the overlap is really the important part, right? Where, where things overlap uh, is often what you're going to find as the, the vital information, or where things dissent from the overlap and contradict it. So in my opinion, reading slowly um, in general doesn't, doesn't give you more than reading broadly and more quickly. In fact, I think reading broadly and more quickly is much, much, much better. So there are my two cents. Hopefully this episode is able to take you into the new year, and uh, hopefully you can pick up a pair or two of earbuds and uh, get cracking. That's all for now. So peace, and because I'm a pacifist, when I say it, I mean it. podcast is a part of the Kingdom Outpost Network. Please check out the links below to find other great podcasts and content related to nonviolence and kingdom living.